Hey, what's going on? In this video, I'm going to be unboxing, installing, and testing out these reflosive front forks for my Teleria Sting MX3. I currently have the Fast Ace inverted forks on my MX3. There is a blown seal, so there's oil leaking out of it. And the reflosas, which I asked, and that's how they told me to pronounce it, are a competitor to these inverted forks. So I'm excited to get those off and get these on. But first, let's open up this box and see what it all comes with. Wow, check this out. I don't know if this will come with every model, but there is a pretty official looking inspection sheet that is right on top here. Got the instruction manual, probably maintenance, half in English, half in Chinese, and there you have it. I don't know where to start. Let's just check these things out. So Refluxa sent me the FCG31 RVP Pro with a progressive spring inside, which is a 45 to 60 pound. I believe that that's the most middle ground for a stiff suspension and a more fluid suspension, which I think will fit my riding style and weight perfectly. Well, there's not much to unbox, so I guess the next step is to install it on my Teleria Sting. Let's start with getting the fast ace forks off of here. I got my Fast Ace forks completely torn apart. As you can see, it is super gunky. And when I turn this, you probably can't hear it, but I can actually hear the oil running back and forth in this fork, which is not a good thing. And that's because a bunch has leaked out because of a blown seal, which I think the Fast Ace forks are known for. You can get upgrades for these. You can buy upgraded forks through various dealers. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen with this new set of forks. But yeah, I had to run down to my local bike shop to get the bearing pulled here. So I didn't have the tools to do that. They just quickly did it for me. Also, I forgot that I needed a star nut, which goes down into the tube of your upright here. And that's what holds it all together. And they threw in some extra grease to use on the shocks. So let's put the Reflosa shocks back on my Teleria. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is see how much of the tube I need to cut. You can get spacers, so you don't need to cut the tube, but that's what I've done on the Fast Ace. So I'm gonna do the same with these forks as well. So this is the lower bearing. I'm gonna grease that one up and throw it on as well. I just wanna show the difference between the two crowns of the shocks. This one is Fast Ace. Uh, it's slightly heavier, looks a little beefier. There's no cutouts right here. Where with the Refloxa, there is. You can see right through that. Um, doesn't feel too much heavier. I'm sure this one will hold up just fine. Another thing that I like about this one though is that it actually has two screws to clamp the suspension on whereas this one only has one from Fast Days, so that might make a difference. Also, they give the torque in newton meters there, so you know how much to torque it. This one was just a guessing game. Anyway, I'm gonna get that pipe measured so I can cut it, and then I will throw this on. rubbed off but the bottom of that yellow line is where I want to make my cut. So if you have the right tools it makes stuff like this a lot easier. Like for instance setting this bearing. There are tools for this as well. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. Perfect. Because of the tight fit, it holds in place. And this is where it'd be nice to have two people to help. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that these are nice and even with each other. Just kinda, kinda gonna eye it, but I should be pretty close. And once I have those nice and even, then I will tighten these. I won't torque them all the way, but just make sure that they're all set. And then we'll throw on the tire and move forward. Probably going out of order here, but I am gonna throw on the handlebars just to get them out of the way. All right, let's do the wheels. They're always fun, but it's a slightly different system than the Fast Ace. Uh, the axle actually has a fatter end on the right-hand side, and then you screw it in tight on the left-hand side there. And so you're really relying on these bolts in the front to keep it tight. All right, so now I'm gonna tighten up the crown of the forks. This is the bottom crown. And on the instruction video I watched, it said do top, then bottom, then middle. You just kind of rotate through that. I'm just gonna hand tighten it. And then I have this torque wrench here, and you probably can't read it, but it says to tighten between 11 to 12 Newton meters. So I'm gonna do that. If you're not familiar with the torque wrench, you just set it to the setting that it calls for. So in this case, I'm gonna go for 12 Newton meters. Almost there, that's 11. 12, and then as you tighten, it gives you a little click when you're right there. Just like that, so there's the top one and I'll do the same thing on the other side and I'll do the same for these ones up top here the top ones say 12 to 13 newton meters so I'm gonna go 13 might as well hit this one in the back it doesn't have a marking but we'll go 13 on it oh it's already there good enough so you probably shouldn't do it this way but the guy at the bike shop told me just grab the five mil bolt for your star nut that goes down in the tube and use that to hammer it in. So I have a bolt in there that I don't need and I'm just gonna kinda use my mallet and hammer that in there. Seems to be working, well, kinda. I wanna make sure it goes in straight. That's it's not going in straight. So you gotta be careful about. Bike shops have a tool for this. Again, I'm not a professional. So I'd recommend getting a professional to do this. But for what I got going on, this seems to be working. So the hammer seems to be doing the trick. I just don't wanna damage anything on the star nut. But we're almost there and see that it's now down in there and for the finishing touch we put the stem cap on and that ties everything all together and I have myself a new set of forks so the last screws I need to tighten are these and I need to torque them, but when I was watching the installation video from the company, they said to drop the bike on the suspension a few times and then tighten them. I don't know if that's to get them into the right place or what, but I'm gonna do that and we'll be fully installed. I got my new front forks installed, but it's dark outside. So I'm gonna mess around with the adjustments, you know, the spring preload and the rebound, and I will take this out for a test ride tomorrow.
Right out of the gate, I want to mention that these front forks offer a massive travel range of 203 to 228 millimeters, giving you plenty of movement to absorb impacts whether you're bombing down a hill or tearing through off-road terrain. These forks feature a stanchion diameter of 37 millimeters and are designed to work with 203 millimeter disc brakes which can be upgraded for more stopping power if needed. It's built with downhill and electric dirt bikes in mind, ensuring compatibility with serious braking setups. Now let's talk suspension technology. These forks use an inverted oil damping system with independent left and right legs. It includes multi-stage adjustments for high speed and low speed compression damping, rebound damping, and spring preload. This means you can fine tune it to your specific riding style and the terrain you're tackling. Durability is a key feature here. The fork is constructed using tough forged aluminum alloy for the top and bottom brackets, ensuring it's strong enough to handle the intense riding conditions. The spring wire is made of super strong steel, which is known for its resilience under stress. Customizing your ride has never been easier. With manual knobs for compression, rebound, and preload adjustments, you can quickly dial in the performance to match changing trail conditions without any hassle. And when it gets really rugged, the fork's oil pressure bottom mount design kicks in to provide extra support at the end of the travel. This helps absorb hard hits, giving you better stability and reducing impact during aggressive riding. The internal damping system includes dual compression valve plates for reliable performance. It's also equipped with high quality, low friction shock absorber oil that maintains its damping performance even in extreme temperatures, ensuring smooth riding no matter the conditions. One of the standout features is the spring customization. You can choose from 45 pounds, 60 pounds, or a progressive 45 to 60 pound spring, depending on your weight and riding needs. I chose the progressive spring for my riding style and weight. With the center distance of 750 to 800 millimeters, a tube diameter of 37 millimeters, and precision machine triple clamps, the Refloxa FCG 31 RVP forks are built for serious riders who demand performance and customization. Whether you're racing downhill or hitting jumps, these forks have you covered. I made it down safely on my Teleria Sting thanks to my new forks from Afloxa and they were phenomenal. They felt great, they rode great. I might need to make some more tweaks to the setup there but uh, nice and sturdy and nice and clean. It was a lot of fun to get out on this ride and these front forks, these shocks, they made it a lot more enjoyable experience. Thank you so much to Refloxa for sending me these forks. If you're interested in your own pair, you can use the code SESSION73 on their website and get a 5% discount. How about that? So be sure to check that out. You'll see these a lot more on the channel here. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the unboxing, the installation, and the ride review of the Refloxa front forks. If you did enjoy this video, go ahead and like it. Let me know what you think in the description down below. These come in at $8.99. What do you think about that price? They are the higher end ones. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.